Now we're gonna look at applying AC analysis to a PFC boost converter. So we're going to start with a PFC boost converter that is already designed. So let's bring that up real quick. And I'm just gonna close this to make some more room. And just zoom in to fit. All right, so let's look at this what we have right here. So sometimes when you're starting with a new design that you're not familiar with, it's good to kind of step through it. So we have um, an AC source. So let's double click here. This is an uh, AC sine wave as our input. It's our voltage. And it has a period, it's a 50 hertz. And we're choosing 50 hertz specifically because we want to make sure that the switching frequency will be an exact, a multiple of that so that we can get the periodic operating point to work on the lower frequency scale. So many places will have 60 hertz, but we're specifically choosing 50, which many places also have 50 hertz, so it's a fine assumption to make. So here's our uh, 50 hertz, and the period's automatically just 20 milliseconds, so just keep that in mind. And we're just doing um, a larger load voltage around this value. We do have a line filter. Um, we can just put that in there for the analysis. Then we have our full wave rectifying diode bridge. Then we have our boost converter that is controlled from the output, controlled by um, a voltage loop first. And then it is going into this multiplier. Um, we're gonna look at that in a second. Assume it works as a multiplier. It multiplies A times B, and then give these the output here. The other part besides this feedback and this signal coming in here, this one that's labeled right now VRF1, is going to be relatively steady. And so that will be not being changing as much uh, only if the voltage is um, changing, for example. So this is what we call like the slower loop. And then we have the line feed forward. So this is taking the rectified line voltage after the, the rectifier and then putting that through the multiplier, and then we're applying that as a reference to the current feedback. So the current feedback will be following the rectified wave. So this loop then is our current loop, and it is generally a faster loop so that it can um, follow the moving current reference. All right, and then that goes to drive our switch of our boost converter. So that's the full system the PFC boost. Now we want to try to apply AC analysis when we have our AC as our input. From here, we're gonna still start from our basics because I like to start from the basic every time. So we're gonna go to an analysis. We're gonna do start with just a transient. Um, one thing you'll have to note before we were, uh, we're still operating at 100 kilohertz. Before, when we were looking at just the boost converter, we really wanted a few multiples of that um, switching uh, cycle. But here we wanna get at least one full um, wave of the AC. So here we're doing 20, 20 milliseconds, and we're gonna just go with that and see what we get. So we're gonna press run here. and we're getting some outputs over here on the right. This is a transient just to make sure that things are switching. Um, I wanna stack these just so I can see what's happening. So we're gonna click here, then we're gonna go to curves and then stack all curves. I generally prefer that. Here it's the beginning transient, so we're seeing it, it's adjusting. Here we just wanna see, um, right at this moment, just making sure that it's switching. I, I just usually do that to confirm that the, things are actually switching properly. So that looks good. Um, now we want to try to go to pop. So this is where we need to figure out how to do our pop trigger. And I did cheat a little bit just so that I don't mess up when I was placing things. I've already placed the trigger here, so let's talk about it. So we have our pop trigger. I'm gonna um, uh, enable this. So if you don't want to use a component, you can disable it by just right clicking and then disable it. It's very convenient, then it doesn't uh, take away from the simulation and then you can just re-enable it when you want. So we're going to enable this pop trigger. 
we can also enable this. This is just scaling down um, this voltage relative to here because if you notice our ground is actually over here uh, near the input of the rectified or of the input of the boost converter. So here we're just going to be reading this uh, AC input and whenever that goes through the pop trigger uh, in its normal cycle, then it's going to do the pop trigger and say, okay, this is the end of the period that I want you to find. So we've moved it away from the sawtooth. Notice it's not on the sawtooth. It's here for the AC analysis. Okay, so now we're going to try that. So choose analysis. And now we're going to try pop. And let's just go to the pop um, one here. I already changed this, but this is really important. So the maximum period here, if we were before we were on 100 kilohertz, so our maximum period is relative to the period of the converter, but now we want to look over the full um, cycle. So our period here can be uh, usually just a little over what you're looking for. So two, 20 um, milliseconds. So we're doing 21 milliseconds. And also here, um, the cycles before launching pop, if this is too high, it'll make your simulation really long. If it's too short, it will not be stabilized in time. So I'm using 10 here and uh, let's see how it goes. So we're gonna run. This is going to take more time because what it's doing is it's simulating over the full cycle of the um, AC, which is at 50 Hertz, right? So that's just a much longer time scale. And then it's gonna be looking for the repeating sequences. So this is going to take some time. Looks like we're getting some output here. And you can see that we have um, the inductor current. And actually, I'm going to stack these again because I just prefer that. Stack all of our curves here. So we have our V, our G, our rectified waveform. And so that kind of gives us you know, a reference. And then you can clearly see that the inductor current is following that. So that means that our control is working properly. And then our output is uh, 400 volts, which is where the voltage of feedback is set to that point. So that is looking good. Let's just check how long that took. Uh, in the video, I definitely cut it off, but actually it wasn't terrible. So you can look at the total time over here was about one minute and 10 seconds for that. So just something to keep in mind that doing that one cycle did take some time. All right, so this is good. This shows that we're reaching pop. Um, and just to reiterate, the sawtooth waveform does, or the frequency here, our setting here, does have to be a multiple of that 50 hertz. So 100 kilohertz is fine. So it's a, a harmonic of that. And so then, um, it can make sure that it's uh, each cycle, it's starting exactly from the same place. So that looks great. Once we reach pop, then we can move on to the AC analysis. Before we actually do that, we need to set up the AC analysis. Here, I'm gonna focus again on the loop gain. So we're gonna break our controller. And this time I'm actually gonna put it in a different place, the AC perturbation and let me just enable this and move this in here. I'm gonna put this one here. Um, previously, we've actually tried a, a few different locations just to confirm, but this location for this specific design um, was give the best results because what we wanna do is create the perturbation here after it's kind of stabilized the output voltage. Then we're creating a perturbation uh, after this, the compensation, voltage compensation, and then going into the multiplier. Um, so then, this will we will actually see that in this loop and it will come out at um, I'll go at the output go all the way back around through here so just to set that up I'm gonna enable these and just to double check the V ref this is remember after the positive or on the positive side that's our input to our AC analysis and then the VCMD that is going to be our output so we can just check our display settings here. It looks fine for us. And then 
we can go forward with this. In our settings, we are going to now press AC, but let's go, let's look at these um, settings. This is going to do pop at every single point that we ask it to. So let's, these settings are going to be important. Uh, maybe before we could kind of go lower than we really want and higher than we really want. But here, since the time is going to be taking more, more time, we can really focus on, on the range that we want. So I'm setting our starting frequency at one hertz and then up to 200 kilohertz, double the uh, frequency, switching frequency. And then I'm only putting five points per decade just because I wanted to just see the curve and I don't want it to take forever. So we can uh, maybe initially when you're doing this, do a lower, fewer points. And then if you want a uh, higher uh, resolution, then you can up these points here. So let's go ahead and run this. Just so this is actually useful for you when you're running this. This is going to take a long time, but you can see um, like the current iteration that's working on and then the total time here. It updates periodically so you can see like how long it's taking. And so if you're doing a lot of simulations and you really want to minimize your time, you can you know observe the different, you could look at the output here to kind of optimize that. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to skip, skip ahead to the time that it's already done, and I'll just show you the time again. All right, we have some output here. First, let's just go back real quick and see how long that actually took. This one took uh, four minutes and 38 seconds, so definitely longer, a bit of a little bit of time, but actually doing a lot of different computations here. So let's just look at the output. Um, we have our magnitude plot and our phase plot and we can uh, it is a little bit um, lower resolution right because we did fewer points but we can still see the general trend here and we can still do the analysis stability analysis here um, the default that's shown here is um, in this case it's showing the first value actually let's say we want to look at the phase margin uh, gain margin and crossover frequency um, just so you know how to do this, we can delete all measurements, and if we want to add our own, we can measure. These ones are not going to be the frequency domain. Go to A, More Functions, and then you just have to scroll down to the ones you want. Um, make sure you're doing dB plot, so let's do the crossover frequency, and we're looking at the magnitude, so add the crossover frequency there. We can add another one. Gain margin, also on the AC plot, and our last one, we'll do phase margin, that's on the phase plot, so make sure to select the phase, there we go. And so then we can also see um, these parameters for specifically for stability uh, in the loop gain of the PFC. So this is actually with an AC input and so we can get that output, measure that output um, with our AC here. All right, one last thing I didn't actually mention about the multiplier. Here, this component is actually another um, one that needs you need to have this component. You can also build it, but I suggest just using the one that's that exists already. This is the multiplier. It's using all Simplest components, but it's uh, I'm not going to go through the details of it. This is actually provided by Simplest, so um, it works as a multiplier and works fairly well. Of course, there's some um, like bandwidth ranges issues if you get to extremes, but for this PFC, it works very well. And so, just to show you what's inside the block here, but once you just pretty much use it as a multiplier and then we can use it in our PFC boost. And so here's our full system. We can use the AC analysis to um, get the body plot of, in this case, the loop gain. And that's 
took some time, but we were able to get that measurement. So I'm going to stop here for this part.